Hello, hello, and welcome back to What is a Biology? I'm your host as always, Mr. Johnny Hopkins, and today we're going to talk about post-transcriptional control. And so we need to know how this, so we talked about how you can um, modify which genes get uh, expressed and not by transcription factors. However, now once these genes are expressed in the form of transcript, an RNA transcript, what happens next? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and so one thing to just remember, because I'm going to say this a lot, is transcript. A primary transcript is what goes from the DNA to the RNA, and then that undergoes processing. And so we all recall, we've got this thing called alternative splicing, and 60% of the human genome is alternatively spliced. And there's a lot of different um, types of RNA that are involved in the process of post-transcriptional control, and some of that we won't get into today, but in the uh, following lectures are these guys called microRNA and small inhibitory RNA, miRNA and siRNA, that regulate the um, mRNA expression inside the cell. We'll get into that later. It's got to be a little dicer. Eh, next time, trust me. It'll be, it'll be a fancy one. This we're going to focus primarily on mRNA here, which um, are the guys that get made into, um, made by uh, polymerase 2, Pol2, and they have a, this mRNA has a 5 prime cap and a 3 prime poly A tail, and without that kind of thing, it will stay always in the nucleus and never be exported. So, you have the 5 prime tail, the 5 prime cap, the transcript, and the three prime poly A. And this right here is the primary transcript. So how does this processing occur? What does the process, this processing of adding these guys on, and it's co-transcriptionally co done. So as the RNA is just kind of meandering outside of the uh, polymerase, it is also being processed. And so this um, starts uh, immediately at about uh, 25 nucleotides into this transcription where the 5 prime cap is made. So that 25 nucleotides is when it starts to emerge from the polymerase. So it starts to actually get outside that channel and gets exposed to solvent and then we get some guys to go on in. And what, the way that this happens is this 5 prime cap is done by a 7 prime um, methylation on the guanosine. Um, so without this, so with this it helps prevent digestion of the mRNA and the way that this is performed is by the CTD of Paul 2 The CTD is the C-terminal domain. It helps recruit enzymes and gets this, trans gets this reaction undergo, undergone. So, real quick to remember, RNA in the cell is not naked, period. RNA is always surrounded by something else. It's got some clothes on. It's, it's not going on those new beaches in California having a fun time. It's always got its clothes on and is an upstanding citizen when it, is, when it exists in the cell. Otherwise, it gets destroyed because the cell is approved. So, the RNA is not naked and the cell makes it have these protein shirts on. And what we call these guys are ribonucleoproteins, RNPs, which is just a protein RNA complex and that helps facilitate everything that happens with these RNAs. It helps make them into proteins, helps digest them, it helps everything go on, get on steady. So what happens is you get a nascent mRNA, some protein is attached to so it, you've got a nascent RNP, and then you've got it actually make out into the RNP and then it's exported as a cytoplasmic RNP. So heterogeneous, so there's also different types of RNPs, and one of them is heterogeneous RNP or HNRNP. And what this guy does is helps process the RNAs outside of the cell, sorry, outside of the nucleus. And so these guys are usually around 30 to 120 kilodaltons. So the way that these uh, free RNAs and the um, HNRPs associate is by uh, the, with the secondary structure of the proteins that are involved, the two degrees, if you will, um, which uh, consists of around 80 amino acids 
AAs, and uh, which ha has this motif of four beta sheets, or four beta strands that make up a beta sheet, and two, um, two alpha helices with this RGG box. Now, this RGG box, what does that mean? Arginine, glycine, glycine, and this guy is able to facilitate attachment to the backbone of these RNAs. So another process that happens is the polyadenylation, which has been covered previously. However, one thing to just note is that all mRNAs have this sequence of AAUAA, around 10 to 35 nucleotides upstream of the poly A tail. Without this existence, the RNA would be destroyed immediately. It's just a signal that says, hey, I exist and don't kill me. Because the cell just wants to kill things randomly unless it says self. So, now one other major, major uh, alteration that's done to mRNAs is called splicing, which has been talked about previously in depth, but you got exons and introns. Exons are the things that are expressed, introns are the things that are spliced out and do whatever the heck they want to do afterwards. And so at these junctions between an exon and intron, there's a conserved sequence, which typically have a pyrimidine uh, rich uh, se se sequence at the three prime end as well. Um, and the way the splicing is done is by a transesterification process. And with these guys called snRNAs, small nuclear RNA. So snRNA, they um, are the splicers. And there are uh, five really that are U rich. You've got U1, U2, U4, U5, U6, and you also got U3, but that is not also uh, you're so heavy. So these guys are around 102 to 210 nucleotides long, and each of them have just around 6 to 10 proteins in this com SRNP complex. Because RNA does not exist naked in the cell. So what happens at first is you got U1 that base pairs with the 5 prime end of the mRNA at the between the sites, and then U2 will uh, do a complementary uh, complements complementary base pairs with the uh, consensus flaking sequence in the pre-RNA, and then once it assembles, it makes into a splice zone, groups all the other guys in, gets some splicing happening that does a transesterification process. So now, after you've got all these introns spliced out, you need to get the heck out of the nucleus so it can make these proteins. Make some good old wiggly boys that fold into not wiggly boys and those things inside the cell. So you have RNA export factor, REF. So this guy associates with the um, HNRPs and then gets it outside that outside into the cytoplasm so we can make some proteins. So, real quick, there are also uh, two major types that are uh, known for the uh, introns. So group one introns, these guys are self-splicing. These guys can be found in protozoans, bacteria. They don't need any of these uh, SNRMPs to perform this process. We also got group two, which are uh, found in RRNA and tRNA, which are also self-splicing. They form a secondary structure with the stem loop, and then just kind of boop, so, it just kind of, boop, and then this guy kind of exists on its own. So it's got this transesterification process right over then that guy. Um, so now we're gonna talk about some importance of the uh, alternative splicing, which has been talked out in depth previously, but so isoforms, same transcript, different splicing. So. That 60% of the human genome, that's this guy. So you can just kind of take out exon 2 or exon 3 and just different random ones and just kind of stuff happens and you get magical different stuff that happens biologically speaking because of this. So one of these examples is Drosophila, the SXL gene, which is known as the sex lethal gene. Um, they're transcribed in both sequences. The female, everything is expressed. However, in the male, there's an early stop codon because the female splices out exon 3, and so this blocks the um, further blocks downstream uh, binding of U2AF and U2SNRP, whereas exon 3 is expressed in the men. In the sorry, in the male uh, Drosophila and have an early stop codon. 
then this gets further regulated by the tra protein, which in males it uh, skips exon three, and in females all exons are expressed because it's regulated by SXL. And then because tra further actually uh, ex regulates the expression of DSX, the men, the male uh, Drosophila will express exons three and four, whereas the females will express exons three. Sorry, ex males will express exons three and five. Females will express exons three and four. So one single alternative splice, one form of alternative splicing, forms to the next one, goes to the next one. It's all this downstream process that helps co uh, create this regulation of the cell as itself. So furthermore, you, I, this is not just a sex-linked uh, intrinsic thing at all uh, biology. You can have it actually happen on the spot, on the fly, where like where you've got neurons that will spice based on the calcium uh, concentration with depolarization and the action potentials shooting on with uh, cellular interactions. So they will actually spice based on the concentration so they can figure out how to depolarize and it happens in minutes where um, you have A plus spike sites, which actually comes to 570 different isoforms that actually help regulate the neuron and uh, brain systems. So now we're going to step back for a second and talk about the export of these processed spliced genes. So the export, it happens with the H and RNP binds to the mRNP, then it goes to the nuclear envelope. Now what's the nuclear envelope? It is a double uh, membrane with the nuclear pore. And so you've got these little holes that go through both of them. And so uh, you recall as well, the nucleus is the second, this second um, membrane is contiguous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum where proteins are made. So essentially, as you can get this guy out of there, it goes immediately into the rough ER and you get a bunch of proteins. So these pores are made up of these guys called nuclear pore complexes, or NPCs. Not non player characters, but NPCs, nuclear pore complexes. So these are very, very large structures of octomers, which each of these oct octomer, individual octomer segments have um, 30 plus proteins. So this, um, that means we've got also eight flaps into the nucleoplasm and eight flaps into the cytoplasm, and these flaps form a nuclear basket, boom, like that. And so one of these big things with these flaps is you have essentially the long tail, but then you've got a F, ah, G, G, repeat in the middle. Ah. Yeah, just pretend that's good. And so on. So you got this solvated region, but then you got this hydrophobic region right there that is repeated uh, throughout. And these repeats are actually able to create this hydrophobic region, which allows for the um, binding to, binding and recognition of different macromolecules so that you can actually figure out is this an RP that needs to get out of here, or should this guy just kind of stay there and it wasn't fully processed? Let's let's keep it there until it's fully processed or let it die. So that is having purpose of these nuclear pore complexes recognize and uh, export slash import based on these FG repeats with these nuclear baskets. So now all in total, just go back through everything real quickly. You've got a primary transcript, which is with the RNA, which is the direct DNA to RNA stuff. Um, RNA is not making it in the cell because the cell is brewed. The five prime cap exists. The three prime poly A tail exists. Uh, and RNPs are the reason, are the things that RNA makes up. The rival nuclear proteins. SNRNA perform splicing with the spliceosome, but through transesterification processes, there are different types of introns. Group one, cell splicing. Group two, um, is still RNA and tRNA. Uh, different isoforms means different formation of RNA uh, through the alternative splicing, and it's all this cascade process that is self-regulated. And through export is done by nuclear envelopes with these nuclear pore complexes. So that is everything for the post-transcriptional control part one. 
Next time we'll talk more about RNA interference. I'm Mr. Johnny Hopkins, as always. Thank you for watching.